Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminar Session 2 Mass and Family Modelling. This is part 5 continuing with further mass forms. Okay, so we left off in the previous video. We'd created a cube on the ground, we'd created a circle with a parameter, both of which are locked to that centre crossing point of the work planes there. Okay. We're going to look at polygons now. Polygons, we have inscribed and circumscribed polygon tools up here. Neither of which are any good for creating parameters. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to select this top surface, this top work plane here. Creates a polygon. Now a polygon can be anything from three sides to infinite sides, depending on how powerful your machine is. Um, and that's defined in there. And that makes a shape. These polygon shapes haven't got a center point, as with the circle, so we can't lock it to a center. And also, if we try and change their size, they deform. So they don't naturally emerge from a center point and it's actually a little oversight by the programmers I feel um, that that hasn't been done the same as the circle because it is something that you might want to do so there's no way of changing this form without deforming it and so it's very difficult to parameterize so this is an example this is an e so this is an example of when we have to find a workaround I've deleted that off. We're going to do very similar to the circle below. We're going to create another circle, lock it to the center, but then use it as a host for our polygon. To do this, ensure that the top work plane is selected. Use your circle tool. I'm going to draw up and off, and I'm going to make mine large select it, turn its centre mark on again you can see its centre mark, jump into the 2D use a line to lock that centre point down again it can be quite tricky to see and then lock, ok so that's locked it down we're going to use point elements. Now point elements are very clever little things and they can be added to another form and they, they then understand where they are on that form in relation to it and uh, you'll see what I mean. If I select this point and go onto that circle there, if I select that one point now just pull that over so you can see normalized curve parameter 0.31 it's 31 percent around that circle from that point there which is known which is zero of that circle okay we can also look at this in degrees measurement type normalized change that to angle so the same reading now gives us 113 degrees around from zero. So if I made it zero, you can see I get a point there. That's zero on that circle. Okay. It's a little counterintuitive. Most people expect zero to be right at the top, but mathematically zero on a circle is at that point there. Okay, so let's add some more points. Let's make a five-sided shape. Now I'm just going to randomly click once, twice, three, four. I have my original there, so I've got five points to my shape. I'm going to go in and using my additive select, holding my control, making sure I don't select my circle, but I do select my points. I'm going to change those four more points instead of being normalized to being angle 
and then hit apply there. Now, 360 degrees, full circle, divided by 5 is 72. So we need our first point here to be 72. Jumps it around to there. Our next point to be 144. 2 times 72. Our third point to be 3 times 72, which is 216. And our fourth point to be 288. Okay. These points relate strongly to this tool here, spline through points. And normally what you can do is create a bunch of points like that. Revit knows in which order you created them and I hit spline through points and I would get a spline through those points. It's curving around very much like a French curve. I'm just going to delete that off. If I was to do the same here, select all five points and hit spline through points, I'm going to get a spline with curves in between. Now what we want is a straight edge. So if I just use my control to select two of those points and hit spline through points, I get a straight line. Do the same for those two. Do the same for those two. continue around. I'm selecting off each time and then using my control to add the two points. That gives me a five-sided shape inside this circle. At the moment we haven't got a parameter to control the radius of this circle. I can drag it and you'll see my points and so my five-sided shape goes with it. So let's add that parameter. You see in here I have my temporary dimension. Click on that and click off. That makes it a permanent dimension. Now I can add a parameter to it. Same as before. Label. Add a parameter. We used radius center circle before. So let's add a parameter. Call it radius top poly. Okay, let's jump into 3D. You can see I've now got a very large circle on the top. Let's make some changes. Top radius, let's make that down a little bit. 40,000 apply and my points go with it. So I've got parameters driving my profiles. When you use profiles to create a mass, and we could just now select all three of those using my control and create form, I do get a shape. However, if I now change my top polygon, for instance, down to 20,000, notice over here nothing happens. My circle goes in but my polygon doesn't. So cancel that, control Z to undo, control Z to undo the create mass. How to make our masses flexible is if I select all three I want to tick on here in the pro properties is reference line. That turns them purple and turns them into reference lines rather than just straight drawn model lines. Reference lines are much more flexible and they will bend and contort as we go. So let's do the same move now. I'm going to select all three of my new reference lines and create a form from them. Go in here and now start manipulating change that top one down, change that center one, let's make it bigger, 60,000 and let's make 
our cube size much bigger. So you see we have control of our form. We could make these objects as types. Each one of these parameters we've just left as type parameters. So if I wanted to make one that was 160-20, go new, say 160-20, so that's just naming it, it's uh, not a very good name, but it'll do for this, and it's apply, now maybe type 1, that's going to be 50-30-10, Okay, change that to 50, change that to 30, change that to 10, apply. I can now jump in between my two forms. Okay, we have repeated this. This is repetition from a previous exercise. This form can now be taken into a project. If I start a new project, so I haven't actually got one open, jump back to where I was there and load into the project. It's rather a big form. I've got two, so I'll put two in there. If I select one now, One's called 106020. I've got another one, 106020. I can change that to my smaller one. Okay. So these are random forms. These are random shapes, but these needn't be random forms and shapes. You can use all of these tools to create real world objects and make them parametric so flexible. Okay. We will continue with how to add parameters into sweep and rotate on the next video, so please find that. Thank you.